Hey guys, Tyrup up here, bringing you a 1v1 today. We are on Crossroads. Playing for today, spawning in the north, we have Tronch playing as OKW and his loadout as Elite Armored, Grand Defensive, and Scavenge. From the south, we have Moon Banner as the Brits, straight away locking into Mobile Assault. This is a Patreon backer submitted game in terms of rankings here. Moon Banner around rank 110. Tranche around rank 300. Alright, so Universal Carrier peppering away. Soft retreat there from the full screen. It is no chase from the sections yet. Gonna try to get some sandbags down there first. And Gonna go through the center there, all right. Opportunity is coming in from the side here, but be better if they came from a slightly lower angle. Maybe got some rear armor hits going there. And uh, still no fuel connection from Tronch. Center getting forced away. Fox Street is behind that heavy cover there. Looks like the sandbags didn't get completed, maybe interrupted over here. Pretty static front line at the moment. Fox Street is trying to make a dash across. Intercepted though. Can take some damage on their way through. Maybe we should carry up popping the Vickers now. Go and turn up the heat. Fox Street is on the move. Quite low, trying to soft retreat behind the heavy cover here, but I just don't think it's really worthwhile. But alright. Holding this position at the moment, but can't really like push out or advance. Just gonna bleed a lot of manpower to this universal carrier ultimately. Oh, but we here we go. Maybe this can turn things around. Shrek squad trying to come in from the side. That section did see them coming, so they didn't end up getting any damage done. Under fire from enemy bastards. Okay, very safe with the universal carry. Probably not 100% necessary. Don't know if Moon Banner has the reads on how many Fox Meteors have been produced, but four at this stage. This will be tough for a Rakesson to be on the front line at the same time as well. Maybe one could be in construction around now, but... Not in the position to finish the job on the UC, just just worry about that Shrek. Good job here, hiding behind the building though. Got some medics out from Moon Banner. Sentry grenade flushing the squad out of the building. This uh, squad's actually getting quite low. the fight for a touch longer. Maybe there's a carrier mobilizing but maybe awkward timing right as the squad tries to vault. Oh and they fire off the Shrek super long range and there goes the UC. Yeah it was a dangerous game to be playing. Overall how I would say that Moon Banner, you know, trying to take these fights, but a lot of these squads are very low in health. It's just better to, you know, maybe concede a tiny bit of territory to save something like 100 manpower, you know? Oh, and medics are actually on the front lines capping at the moment, so they can't, they can't heal anything that's retreating right now either. Here they go now. But yeah, it's a big blow losing the universal carrier. Shouldn't really happen unless like they sneak around a corner with a foul so you run over a mine or something like that. Stempire with a shrek should also never be able to kill the universal carrier. It shouldn't be operating at that amount of health at that kind of range to allow that kind of thing to happen. Got a group up for Tronch with the healing now. Uh, 
we do have the Vickers, meanwhile, for Moon Banner. We're going to spend a wee while back there. The delayed retreat from those medics. So, did you know, maybe gain some time by capping this point, but then end up losing it by having to stand in base for so much longer with like three squads or so, two or three squads. Because trying to suppress, but they are behind light cover. Our capture point. They're trying to take and often it. struggle in those kind of scenarios. Stone pies, meanwhile, on top of the fuel. Tronch, gonna try advance through the center. No, just kind of camp it out. Does have a nice zero heavy cover position. The enemy caused our supply line. And uh, rather strangely, Moon Banner did go for just the regular Royal Engineers instead of the recovery sappers available in this commander, which. Yeah. I don't really see like any real reason to build the regular ones. Even if you've got bolster, like. Sometimes the uh, boosted repair speed on the. Recovery sappers is nice, or the smoke grenade, or the flamethrower option. None of which are available with just the regular sappers, so... Bit of a mistake there, I'd say. Try to make use of the medics for he healing again on the front lines. There's locked in to bolster. It's worth kind of tricky sometimes, you know, they pop bolster, and then you think that their squads are damaged, but... Still perfectly healthy, just now missing one model. Kind of need to recalibrate your thinking about how quickly everything's going to die in the engagements. But yeah, so far, a very Enemy even split of the map. It's like Moon Banner going for a couple brain squads. Getting around the side of the Vickers here, though. And there they go. Sounds like double brains on that squad as well. Meanwhile, Tronch, we're going to push out a very fast tier 4 here, it looks. Putting this one in base. No, a mechanized. That's very strange and probably not recommended. Supply is looking a bit squiffy. Line's been cut. I wonder if he's trying to go for like a, a fast king tiger or something. I, I, don't, I don't really understand why you'd go for that. Even if you're going for the fast king tiger, you still want your square down so you can get out some overs, right? Otherwise, your fox trainers are just going to get torched by the double brin sections. Way too late, really, to be building a Lux. Lux can be pretty successful against this kind of build. No anti tank gun, one snaring squad. Invest a lot of, you know, fuel into side grades, so maybe can't go for the AEC as readily. So these kind of uh, strategies can be pretty good for a light vehicle such as the Lux. But the, this, the timing on this is like three minutes or so late. Timing is of the essence with those vehicles. Vickers getting uh, a bit aggressive here, pushing in. Green is being performing overrun. super well close range. Squad trying to sneak around the side. Sapper's saying still, which you know, does help their Vet 1 ability do some more damage. Send your grenade out though. MG gonna have to retreat here. Retreating through his own flames. Going for the VP first instead of the fuel. Alright. Puma first here as well, which is unusual. Maybe if you're already up against an AEC, I could understand it. But 
Otherwise, you just want to be doing max anti infantry damage, and the Puma doesn't really perform too well in that department. Not even using it either. Got some Brens on the commandos now as well, so Moon Banner with just such a massive lead in the anti infantry department now. It's going to be really tough for Tronch. Needs these light vehicles to hit hard right now. And they're just sitting in base, at least the Puma is. I see the ideal use for the Puma will probably be to try and cap, like catch isolated capping squads out of position. Of just force them away. Just getting the look, looks in, doing some big damage to the bulk of the forces. But he's just left it back at base there. I don't understand why. Start for the looks, but it doesn't drop any models, and that's, that's probably the main issue I'd say I have with the looks. You know, I've played quite a few look strategies lately. Supply line's been cut. Very often does a lot of health damage, but doesn't seem to drop the models as well as some of the other light vehicles. Oh, Bren on the ground. Looks like all the folks upgraded with their weapons so they can't pick that up and here we go tranche mobilizing the looks Our capture point. They're trying to take it. and these brain sections are just giving it to the OKW troops wherever they appear the enemy caught our supply line That's better. Back at full and uh, moon men are very close to being able to push out a cromwell now don't know if he's seen the puma reconnaissance vehicle ready just needs a bit more manpower might even be worth holding reinforcements on one or two of these units to try to get that cromwell out faster but not a big deal now that everything's started to be equipped with uh brains as well i'll be trying to get some mines i really like these two spots there's mine positions damned enemies trying to take a point from us pretty safe to put your mines down there like relatively hard to sweep it does often see quite a lot of vehicle traffic especially with your opponents making like an, ag an aggressive maneuver nice and send your grenades this squad's quite low now going forwards a bit further but not the optimal range for the Brents it's going to be a centaur first. Okay, that's bolt. Centaur, you know, it does perform perfectly well against it's both of these. The it does have enough penetration and damage. Issue is, it's a little bit slow to keep up with the puma, so often it can uh, zone it out. Dodging the bundle grenade or the uh, light gamma bomb from the commanders quite cleanly there. Good idea coming onto this side of the building though, only one window. But with that looks around the corner, it might not be our last. And two squads coming in from the other side, this ends up going poorly towards the tail end. Looks like the looks is going to go for the kill, no? Coming back across for the Bryn Mandos. And here comes the Centaur, looking for the kill. We've got two squads nearby. Can struggle to with the attack rounds as well. Enemy threatening a capture point. And with one burst of uh, Centaur fire, I don't think he could have killed the looks there. Really need to chase a bit further. If that was to be killed. Tromch now getting the final tip truck. It looks like. It's locked into Elite Armoured, so it does have the heat shells on the Puma, can give it a bit of extra sting against that Centaur. Centaur, meanwhile, waiting around the corner, I probably can hear this in the fog of war, repairing in that range. Might not have noticed though. Looks like Centaur switching sides again. Puma is back there. A 
pressuring the Fox community is now. This isn't the ideal range for the Fox. For the, uh, oh, there we go. Heat shells firing off. And doing some big damage too. Trying to get behind the building. And it's successful. The Moon Banner doesn't have... Oh, I lost... Oh no, I'm still alive. Doesn't have the easiest time here. No anti-tank gun or anything to help deal with the Puma. Only one snaring squad as well. So that Puma is a pretty big threat. But yeah, at the moment I'd say Moon Banner... Maybe the, f the uh, sections are getting caught out of position a few times. Not really being able to use them long range or stationary a large proportion of the time. So Fox Creedies are being quite a lot more effective than they usually are in this kind of scenario up against the double green sections. Storming out, find time from behind that sandbag. Probably a scenario where the look should be driving right in, nullifying that cover, especially while the Centaur is repairing. Can afford to get it a lot more aggressive. Here comes the boom with the heat shells and the Shrek. And the missing the killing blow though, pretty likely to miss on the move at that range, so not a huge surprise, but cheeky move from Tronch and it nearly paid off. We are in the base as well. So a lot of manpower floating for Tronch. Probably should have got a Rakitten out by now. This time you can see the matchup going much better for Moon Banner. And we're getting close trying to push them. A bit of incendiary grenade action as well. And they can still win from inside the building. Take aim, activate it on the Vickers. And do some decent damage to the Puma because of that. Fernando's getting to work now, and here comes the Cromwell. Double medium tanks now. We've been in a commanding position. We've got the Panzer IV in the works for Tronch, though. Which we get in some trouble with the. Uh, Cromwell's turret faced in the wrong direction, maybe missed a shot worth of damage. These kind of uh, tank chasing scenarios, especially with the Cromwell, which you know, doesn't have a machine gun upgrade, no Pintle. You really want to make sure the front of the tank is facing towards the retreating unit as much as possible. Try and maximize the damage from the Hell machine gun, especially you know, the Cromwell. Which, uh, doesn't have the best machine guns. But yeah, Tronch may be still lacking a little bit in the anti-tank department, even once this Panzer IV arrives. Moon Banner also probably could do with an anti-tank gun. And I'm quite curious that Tronch does decide to go for a machine gun first. Generally, do prefer trying to get Obers out if you can. Trying to start vesting them up, you know, the vet makes such a big difference on the Obers. So, getting them to vet to as quickly as possible makes a huge difference, whereas vetting up the MG34, not as impactful. One thing that Moon Banner could also be doing is upgrading a few of these sections. With the pyrotechnics boosting up their sight range can be really handy. Damage there from the Panzer IV with the heat shells. Cromwell missing the return fire shots. I'm missing, or oh, I'm bouncing that time. We've got the engineers there for the snare. Cromwell, I would just not come back in. And there we go, Boom is coming in now. Going for the Boom with the Centaur, which I think is a good idea. Doesn't stand much of a chance against the Panzer IV. And there we go, Puma going down. Maybe a tiny bit late pop in the smoke. Steering squad nearby also not mobilized for Tronch. 
Cromo got to come back in. Cheeky shot, but that was a bounce. Oh, bounce. Oh, miss. Miss. Out of range. Maybe we can kill this engineer on retreat, though. Still on prioritized vehicles, so yeah, you can see. Tronch missing a bit of micro in these engagements. Oh, that's a nasty activation of the Vitmon ability on the Centaur. That's like the reason to get the Centaur, I would say, that Vitmon ability. So good. But yeah. <laughs> to get stuff there from both players. It's, it's kind of funny to see how things pan out. We need the player has an anti tank gun either. Very different dynamic to these engagements. So yeah, one uh, Fox Trinity dead down for Tronch. Doesn't steal away the Vickers either, which I think I'd probably remaining. be doing since it's right there with the squad. Going to invest into the Rakitan now. Did also pop the emergency repairs to speed up as a force repair time. Second engineer, meanwhile, for Moon Banner. Does have bolster, so you know, these engineers are a tiny bit cheaper. So some of our 40 manpower. I do recall that these also do have a repair speed boost. It's about 15%, so. A forward position has been destroyed. It might be worth paying 40 manpower for that. Meanwhile, getting a bunch of damage done, but both the Brit tanks are fully repaired now. Moon Banner under quite a lot of pressure. I'm trying to. Oh! There's a Gammon Bomb off out the back there. Catch you later to that machine gun. And Cromwell isolates the looks before coming in. This is where the snares could really come in handy for Tronch. Might even be able to get the kill anyway with the Panzer IV. There we go! Down it goes! Maybe now can get the Centaur as well. Coming in with the Faust this time. Centaur doing some crazy maneuvers down the road. Oh, there we go. Good mine. Might save the day for the Centaur. The kid in the center really needs to bring that in. That comes now. Tank grenades out. How did the engineer get up to VIT 2 that quickly? He only just produced it. That's crazy. Trying to hide from the Panzer 4 here. Maybe the Rakim could go for some attack rounds. Oh, main gun crits. And abandoned. Oh my god. Oh, but he sacrifices the engineer squad jumping inside of it. Oh, that was a bit of a mistake. Here comes the Rakitten down the road. Let's get sight, that thing is dead. So it's at an awkward angle, though. Well, what's the potential for the Rakitten to bounce there? And then the even with the heavy engine crit, we dodged away in time. Or oh, grenade into the retreat. That could be nasty, no. Retreated very close to the building, slightly the right hand side of that grenade. Look at those Brens just roasting these Falks communities. They don't stand a chance. We build on the Panzer IV though from Tronch. Here it comes. Centaur trying to back to base. Double rebuild on the Engineers. I didn't notice that both of them died. I didn't really see the second one go down there. Do have hammer, so it looks like Moon better try to save for the comet. Very close to that, just about 10 fuel away. But yes, yeah, this, this machine gun's been there for the taking for Tronch multiple times. He hasn't picked it up though. Here it comes now, getting aggressive with the Panzer IV. A little bit risky. 
no sweepers he has run over a mine just before I wouldn't be doing this Damned enemies trying to take a point from us personally getting some work done do have the comet in production Crew appears on the centaur as well. Our capture point. They're trying to take it. This is not a head to head you want to be taking with the centaur if possible. Just so little penetration against that high armor Panzer Fort J. It seems like Moon Banner does have a slight edge in terms of vehicle control, playing these ranges. Slightly more strongly, and you can see Tronch maybe with the moves. Maybe slightly further forwards and backwards with each move, lacking a little bit of precision. But here comes the Comet, and that is a bad time for the Panzer IV, especially as he just drove forwards with it now. Comet should be pouncing on this, just surging forwards. Playing a very conservative style. We have the raquette nearby, but even if it took one raquette and shot, still very safe against the Panzer IV, even with the heat shells. Second raquette from Tronch. I think that's a better idea. In this stage, you know, it might be worth considering going for the Panther next and. So a decent amount of fuel away from that. Order, is it? But yeah, this is maybe where the uh, repair speed boost would be quite nice. That being said, you know, the vehicle crew repairs can fill that gap. Oh. oh, that was a nasty light gammon bomb squat down. Shells on the Panzer IV does enable it to fight back a lot better against the Comet than usual. Getting a couple of nice pins in there, even now the Panzer IV on the move. Ooh, bounce. I wouldn't be operating my Comet on the front lines at that amount of health, and you never know when that Panzer tank gun's going to come in from the side and get a cheeky shot through. Hard to tell exactly how much health the comet is on, whether it would survive one more shot or not. And there we go, the kid is coming from the side, missing the follow up hit. So it was reloading, so the comet comes through during the reload. Oh, does survive one more shot, and that was a very lucky bounce. Otherwise, that was a dead comet. Oh, suppression kicking in by the stolen Vickers, and that allows the Rakitin to get away alive. Sometimes those health thresholds can be hard to see on those high health tanks with the heat shell mathematics going on. So Tronch going for Ogres at this stage, which I think is a mistake, but maybe going to try to save for the King Tiger, I suppose. Which, okay. If that's his plan, then Ogres at this timing is probably reasonable. Just to make sure he doesn't play too inefficiently, though, with his manpower. This King Tiger is pretty expensive in that department. Might end up with quite a lot more fuel. Instead of uh, having that just in time. Grenade! Shoot! Grenade into the smoke. Commandos actually get very low, but I'm sure they. You know, with the support of the Centaur just getting stuck in there. And then the fight for the center. Both players still on plenty of VPs. Oh boy! Good attack round there through the smoke. But it looks like the Rakitin got cold feet. 
in the out retreating. One more tank round though, might have got the kill on the centaur there. Doesn't have the uh, war speed, so looks like it hasn't been activated yet by the Royal Engineers. Keep them bouncing. Cast a grenade out. Stempai should still retreat at two miles of that amount of health. One comet shot. Can be lights out. The comet was maybe trying to go for a phosphorus shell or something, and then it bugged out. Ooh! Enemy got one of our squads. Okay, well, that was. Squad's down on both sides. Getting with the attack ground through the smoke there. And the heat shell's firing off as well. Oh, it's going to be the end of the Rakitin though. can be quite annoying sometimes with that Rakitin. Run forwards before they start retreating. And now Moon Banner going to steal one of those Rakitin. Tronch doesn't have any stern pose for the repairs anymore, but does still have the emergency repairs in this commander. Oh boy. Oh, that's a big phosphorus and another bounce at Comet. Running pretty good on the bounces from the Rakitin so far this game. Enemy threatening a capture point. So you can see now in terms of army size. Trotch quite far behind. Looks like he's trying to get that KT still going, but in the meantime, he's losing so much territory and I would not be using the Panzer IV in this case. Activate the heat shells. Oh, there we go. Two squads on this door now for Tronch, and now he's got to make that tough decision. Whether to. Oh, he's gonna go for a panther after all of that. He could have had this panther out like three minutes ago or something. He just didn't build those overs. Very strange decision. I thought he was going for the king tiger. But yeah, this is, this is giving me it. <laughs> this is giving me a heart attack. Both these players just running around with their tanks. Low health so often in this match. So many like potential opportunities for these tanks to be lost. Well, there we go. Centaur's back up to full strength. Gonna have the Panther out soon for Tronch. He'll boost up his pop cap, so it'll only be about 10 behind at that stage. So let's see what we can get going here for Tronch. Oh, there we go. Nasty V1 action from Centaur again. Two shots. Panzer IV coming around the corner. Not fully repaired. Emergency repairs uh, heal 400 health, so... Three shots of damage. I'm not going to heal up three shots. Coming around the corner though with the heat shells, and that's a menace for the combat. We do have the Rakitin nearby, and two engineers as well for the snares. Panther though, stopping for a couple of good shots. Oh, missing that one though on the move. Double engineers there. One ability for the Centaur on cooldown, so... Ooh, loses the squad, jumping back on top of that. Panther. The damage engine. Oh, misses the killing blow on the Centaur. Close call, and Moon Banner. Having to retreat, killing the Decrude Rakitin as he pulls back. Doesn't want Tronch getting hold of that again. Oof, that was a very close call for Moon Banner. And yeah, losing that engineer, trying to go for the recrew on the Rakitin, that was really painful. It's going to slow down repairs on these. Looks like he did have enough for one vehicle who appears on the Centaur. 
In this case, though, I'd say the Comet is the number one priority to pair up since it can actually fight back against both the Panzer IV and the Panther, whereas the Centaur cannot. So if I was going to be spending the vehicle crew repairs and the engineers repairing time, that would be the number one priority. Oh, look at those. Oh, the overs just melted. So much green firepower there. Dodge does force the reposition, but those green mandos don't mess around. Quite handily win that one. Here comes the centaur, but we've got the raquette and Panzer IV combo right there as well. Forced off very quickly, but another squad down. Let retreat from Tronch. There's the fault screen there, but the Panther coming in from the side. Gets the kill on the Centaur. Got a second Comet in the works for Moon Banner. Because now we're getting forced almost completely off the battlefield. Without an anti tank gun to support this Comet, that heat shell equipped Panther. A real menace to the Comet. And that Panzer IV now. Vet 5. What a beast. Cheeky shot there from the Comet around the corner. It's a shot block of that tree line, so I can't get through there. Gonna go for the kill on the machine gun as well. Thing is, though, Tronch so low on infantry, can't really, like steal away the map after this victory so it's one thing going for moon banner not going to fall super behind in territory control and vp control in this case here may may have been worth bringing the raquette into the center even going for the cap here maybe seeing the fox communities out to the side you want to fight that to that degree, you can be a bit more aggressive with your team weapon positioning generally. Double combat sound now. This one not fully repaired. Rebuild on the overs. Oh, but there we go. Double comets getting up for a roaring start against the Panzer IV. Needs to pop the blitz. We got the war speed on one of the comets, but it bounces. Building extremely low, was jumping out in the nick of time. Do have the raquette back there. Panther does have the command vehicle upgrade, boosting up its sight range a bit. But yeah, I'd say if I'm tranche at the moment, I'll be forgetting about the Obers. Maybe going for like a stern pile into another tank. Okay, it's going to be the Panzer IV. This is where kit position is going to have to be quite strong. Okay, heat shells, Panther connecting. Kitten misses though. Panther coming around the corner. Got to go for one more shot. Double Comets now on top of the Panther. Panzer IV mobilizing. Speed on the get 3 Comet. All around the corner as well, but not a prioritized vehicles. Popping off some shots at the infantry, now going after the Comet. Panzer IV in some big trouble. One more shot from the Comet, and that's that, and there it goes. And the Panther itself getting a little bit too low, or now running into the clutches of the Royal Engineers, and it sounds like they've got a pit as well. It's extremely low, so they don't come in for the kill. Oh, it's a big grenade. Well dodged, though. Panther in the smoke? Maybe I'm not entirely sure. The engineers don't end up firing off too many pits at it. Making use of the emergency repairs now. We've got the second Panzer IV coming through. Maybe hoping to finish off that main gun critter tank. Still does have enough for one more round of heat shells. 
Oh, but there we go. That's what I was talking about. That mine positioning. The Panzer IV going hunting for the wounded Comet. And that mine just completely shuts down that option. And Tronch with no stern post for repairs. Just relying on those emergency repairs. Now a Firefly for Moon Banner. That much uh, firepower should deal with the Axis tanks quite cleanly. The repair times probably be quite painful. Oh, big damage. The 3 Comet is mobilized though. Back up to full strength. Pins are for nearly. Oh, does get the kill with the machine gun. Wow. The bad luck for Moon Banner. Comet busting. Oh, Panther busting through to fire at the Comet. And now another Panther for Tronch. Like, honestly, Tronch's armor f could win this head to head. The problem is he just has no repairs. Just relying purely on the vehicle points. crew repairs. Oh, no, he does actually. I didn't realize he had upgraded to the mechanizer. I don't recall him using that very often, but all right. That's good news, at least. Lightens the load on the emergency repairs, which is definitely taxing his munitions at the moment. I'm just getting a lot of the VPs now, so under pressure in that department as well. And this is another issue with going for the Obers, you know, without their munitions for the LMG. They're just not that good of a squad, really. Here we go. Waits for the Firefly to get in range. Second Comet. Swarming in on the Panther. Oh boy, that's some uh, clumsy pathfinding from that Panther. It's getting blasted by the triple Brit tanks. We've got the second Panther in the mix now. This is the fresh one. Backing away, backing away. The Panzer IV is back up to full strength. That's coming in now. Might be able to get some damage onto the Firefly. Well, it's facing the wrong direction, especially. It switches its focus fire over to the Firefly. It's one shot now. Oh, but that shot seems to deal on the Panther. Firefly also falling, but we've still got two Comets alive. And it's more than enough to deal with one Panzer IV. Even if he has to play it patient, repair these back up before he turn to the front lines. But it looks like he's going to come in, try to close out the game right here. Did force the uh, Rakit to retreat, so did give a margin of safety to that move. Here comes the Panzer IV again, but without the heat shells, this is not the kind of engagement you want to be taking with your Panzer IV. Engaging. Third Comet now, which should close out the game for Moon Bandit quite handily. But yeah, it was a good move for Moon Bandit overall. You know, playing patiently with that Comet on the side, then just completely overwhelming that Panther once the Firefly hit the front line. And Tronch here yeah, just taxing his munitions so much, constantly using those vehicle crew repairs just. Didn't have the munitions for the blitz or for the heat shells at the right time. Ends up getting completely overwhelmed. Those comments back up to full strength quite quickly thanks to those vehicle crew repairs. Okay, Panzer IV. 
Ready to rumble again. Let's do have that Rakit in his vet too as well, so that's something. It's just very hard to kill a comet with just one Rakitten. Especially German if the comet doesn't have engine damage. It's just you know, good durability with the armor and the health. Okay, well there we go, straight away, right on top of the Rakitten. With the crew grenades on Vet, as well as the activating one. And now just full disrespect going in after the Panzer IV. These comets, even without the war speed, just so fast with that high level of Vet. And Tronch throwing in the towel there. So yeah, overall, I'd say maybe Moon Banner should have won the uh, early stages a bit more with the uh, bolstered infantry section with the double brands. Felt like it uh, should lead to a slightly larger advantage. Tronch going with a very, very strange build. Super late light vehicles. Which uh, the Puma did okay with the heat shells, you know, from his commander, but looks no way that kind of timing like 12 minutes way too late but yeah then uh pretty uh even mid game you know trading armor back and forth maybe tranche coming out slightly worse for wear in terms of squad wipes and that really hurt his map control in the late stages just didn't have much there and yeah just uh, lacking a little bit of micro control as well missing some fausts a little bit slow on the actions there, but can improve with practice, of course. Well, anyway, guys, wrap on that. If you like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you off the next thrilling installment. Goodbye and good luck.